Hey everyone, I'm Kent Conklin and today we're taking a look at how to make new photos look old. As always, we're going to cruise through these tricks fairly quickly, so feel free to pause or rewind the podcast if we're going too fast. And remember, always work on a copy of the image, not the original. Hey everyone, and welcome to the first half of a two-part trick on how to make new digital photographs look like antique prints. We're splitting up this week's trick into two separate shows because of its length and complexity, but each one of these shows should also stand on its own with some interesting tricks. So in today's portion of the trick, we'll add a border to our image, set the tone our image, and rip the edges of our picture. Next week, we'll be adding some grime and real gritty age to our image. So open up an image you'd like to age in Photoshop. Now go to your layers palette and look at your image layer. If the layer has a little lock icon, we need to unlock it before we get going. To do this, simply double click on the layer in the layers palette and click OK in the dialog box that pops open. Having this layer unlocked will allow us to have different layers underneath it later. Now we need to create a new layer for our background. Do this by clicking the little sticky note button at the bottom of the layers palette. Click and drag this new layer in the layers palette below your image layer. The new layer should now be the lowest layer in your image. And this will become the background for our image in the next step. Now we want to create a little space around our image so the background can show through around the edges. Go to the image menu and select the canvas size option. This will open up a new dialog box. In the middle of the dialog box you should see a section labeled new size. In this portion of the dialog box there are two text boxes labeled width and height and a couple of other pop-up menus to the right of each box. Click one of these pop-up menus and select the percent option. Then look below the width and height boxes. There should be a little checkbox labeled relative. Make sure this checkbox is checked on, then type in 10 into both the width and height boxes. Now click OK. Your image should now have a little blank space around all of its edges. Now we can fill this space with a background color. Make sure your new blank layer is selected in the Layers palette, then go to the Edit menu and select the Fill option. A new dialog box will pop open. Click the pop-up menu at the top of the dialog box labeled Use and select the Color option. This will open a little color picker box. In the color picker box you should see three text boxes stacked vertically with the letters H, S, and B to the left of them. Enter 0 in both the H and S boxes and 95 in the B box. Then click OK to get back to the fill dialog box. Then click OK again to fill your new layer with this very light gray color. Now that we have a background for our image, we need to convert our image to a sepia tone. While there are loads of different ways to make an image sepia toned in Photoshop, we're going to use a hue saturation adjustment layer. If you have an alternate method you prefer, by all means use that instead. But for this method, the first thing we need to do is select our image layer in the Layers palette. Then click on the button at the bottom of the Layers palette that looks like a circle that is half white and half black. 
then pick the Hue Saturation option from the menu that pops up. This will create a new Hue Saturation Adjustment layer on top of our image layer. And it will also open a Hue Saturation dialog box. In this Hue Saturation dialog box, click the check box labeled Colorize at the bottom right hand corner of the box. Then enter 24 for the hue value and 7 for the saturation value. You can of course tweak these numbers to your liking, but those are what I used for my example. When you have a setting that looks good, click OK. Now to make some fake dripped edges. Select your image layer from the layers palette and grab the lasso tool from your tools palette. Now click and drag a jagged rip line along one edge or corner of your photo. You want the jagged edge of your selection to stay totally within your image, then loop out of your image with the tool and back around to connect to the starting point of your selection. Then go to the select menu and click inverse. This will select everything in your image except the rip you just selected. Now go to the layers palette and click the little button at the bottom that looks like a white circle inside a gray square. This will create a layer mask so our original selection will be masked or hidden from the image. Grab your smudge tool from the tools palette, which might be docked behind the blur or sharpen tool, and select a small brush between 1 and 7 pixels wide from the options bar at the top of Photoshop. Also on the options bar, set the mode to normal and the strength between 50 and 65. Make sure the finger paint mode is clicked off. Then click and drag with your tool back and forth in kind of a zigzag motion in and out between your image and the background along your rip mark. Don't worry about doing this in an organized fashion. Just go at it. Random is good here. And don't worry about overdoing. This just smudges the layer mask back and forth to make the look of fibers of the paper. But it doesn't actually smudge your image. You can make other rips by doing more selections and then filling them with black in your layer mask. Then repeat the smudge trick. Okay, that's it for this week's show, but make sure to tune in next week for the second part of our aging photos trick. Also, make sure to stop by our website to vote in our listener poll and check out our user wiki. If you have a question about Photoshop or a comment about the show, send me an email at kent at two Or you can leave us a voicemail at 310-928-3214 or Skype us at kent.conklin. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.